Hello and welcome to another video with Arch Beaton. And I know it has been a while since uh, my last video, but I've been busy with college and other life events, graduating soon, stuff like that. Um, but I just wanted to show off something that I made for one of my computer science courses. We are learning computer architecture, just all the different things about how CPUs are designed from logic gates. Uh, we're also learning assembly language. For example, we learned a bit of x86-64. And in my textbook, which I'll link uh, below, the authors came up with this fictional computer architecture called Y8664, and it's just a simplified version of x86-64, and um, it's for learning purposes to show you how one might design these CPUs from the ground up with just logic gates. Um, so after these lectures, I felt that I had a decent understanding of how it could actually be done, and that coupled with the book, I felt ready to design my own CPU. But since I'm not a computer designer uh, physically, I wasn't able to do that. So I was thinking of other options like maybe making a CPU in Minecraft, but that would take too long. So I was basically looking for some way to implement what I had learned in something like a game. So I first looked into Sebastian Logg's digital logic simulator, and that was a good start, but didn't have some of the things that would have made my job easier. So I found this game here called Turing Complete, and it starts you off with a campaign mode um, where you learn from the very basics. You've got your inputs, your outputs, and wires. That's basically as simple as it can get in this game. The yellow wires um, are single bits, and then there's more levels, and you go on and you, you see what a NAND gate is. And then, for example, move further, you make a NOT gate out of a NAND gate, stuff like that. So once you build these components, you then have access to them on the right here. Um, so you can then use them to make more complicated components. And then the game leads you through these different sections called basic logic, arithmetic, memory. You end up building an ALU. There's your output and two inputs. These blue wires carry entire bytes, so that's 8 bits. Um, and then you get further and further on until this highlighted section here called CPU architecture where it says you have a working computer. And using built-in components like this program component, um, it actually runs instructions using these different components that you've built. Um, and this is a fully working CPU. Here's the ALU, condition, flags, and things like that. Here's a bunch of registers. This is a fully functioning Turing complete CPU that the game sort of guides you to build. And after I got to that point, I felt confident in, to sort of recreate Y8664 in this game here. As you can see, I stopped progressing in the tech tree. You get a little further. But I wanted so badly to move on and make this CPU from my textbook. And that is what I want to show off today. Um, it ended up taking around 20 hours and it has completely eaten up my free time in the past several days. So you can skip ahead if you want to see the CPU working, but uh, for now I'll just go into a brief explanation of how this works and what the design methodology was. So in my textbook uh, we studied different designs for CPUs. We learned about sequential CPUs and pipeline CPUs. Um, this one is a sequential CPU, which means that the entire circuitry is only active for a fraction of a clock cycle. Um, and that uh, basically made it easier for me to do, so all the instructions are discrete, and it only starts loading the next instruction uh, when the previous instruction finishes. And if anyone is unfamiliar with what an instruction is, you can think of that basically as a command, or um, you're telling the CPU to do some arithmetic or logical operation, um, a jump, a function call. It's pretty much the simplest unit of programming. Um, and this is, like I said earlier, the lowest level that you can pretty much code on a CPU um, effectively. Um, so let's see. The game has uh, the ability to load from files, so I have these binaries in here. I'll explain that later. Um, this section of the code reads these files byte by byte and loads it into the RAM module. Um, this RAM module and pretty much all of the deep blue components are built into the game. So yeah, like I said, 
the first step is to load this binary file into the RAM. And then once that's done, the 10 tick clock works, um, or, or starts. So in Y8664, each instruction is a variable length, but the max is 10 bytes long. So what I do is I just read 10 bytes every time. Now this isn't the most optimal way of doing it, but it was just the easiest way for me to um, get started because this is my first time doing anything like this. Um, you could save a lot of time, or rather ticks, uh, in this game. Here's a tick when you just hit the play button over there steps through the logic one by one. Could have saved a lot of ticks if I had variable length um, clock cycles because you can find out the length of an instruction from the first byte so you don't have to wait to read the whole thing. But like I said I didn't do that. Um, so what it does like I said is when it starts it begins reading at address 0 in the RAM and then it loads these 10 bytes. These are delay lines that are provided by the game. So you can imagine one byte comes in at a time and they make their way down over to the end here. So by the time 10, 10 bytes have been read, um, the instruction code will be here, pretty much. Then, uh, just like the Y86 architecture, it then uh, the clock pulses and things start to happen. So the Instruction byte is then split up into um, I code and I function. The val C is aligned if required, and then the PC increment is done. Um, this is the entire fetch stage right here um, of the sequential model. Then we move on to the decode module where um, the correct addresses of the registers are determined, and this is done inside a custom component here. Uh, quite ugly uh, as far as crossing wires, but it does work. <laughs> um, so this basically tells the register file whether to read and what to read from, where to write to, etc. Then here's the register file, which is made of 15 um, 64-bit registers, each addressable by these four pins at the bottom. Uh, then there's the your inputs, whether when you need to save data back into registers from the ALU or from uh, memory and here's your two outputs for val A and val B. Um, after that they are passed to the execute stage where the correct values to send to the ALU are determined using this these two components here ALU A and B. Then set CC is determined for if it's an arithmetic uh, instruction, then the ALU computes its result. Y86 supports add, subtract, and an XOR, and that is done here. Um, here's your uh, condition codes set at the end. Here's your function, your two inputs, and then the output. Then after that we set the condition uh, flag according to um, the condition code from potentially the previous instruction. Then we compute the memory address that we need to access and then the memory data that we need to put uh, back into memory. This is useful for either reading or writing to uh, RAM. And then finally uh, we compute the new program counter. Um, so this basically is useful if we need to jump around, call functions, or just move on to the next instruction. Also down here we have stat, which um, is in spec, except these two pins are unused for um, imem error and dmem error. So I do not currently have support for um, detecting errors when the program tries to access RAM that's out of uh, range. If there's a halt instruction, um, it will halt using this halt component. So if I'm running something, it'll just tell me, hey, you can't run anymore. Um, so yeah, that is basically an overview of how this works. Um, the program memory and the data memory are shared. As you can see, this is the read and write section of the memory module, and the wires lead down to here, same as the program memory. So uh, I think I'll just go ahead and run this program, but first let me explain how I actually get this binary file. Okay. So here is a website that I found online, which I ended up forking on GitHub uh, because this is my own version to add this download button. 
Um, but basically what they did is they made um, a Y8664 simulator. So since Y8664 is a uh, fictional architecture, there's no physical computer that can actually run it. So what uh, this creator went and, went and did was they made basically a way for you to code according to the same uh, rules as in the book, and then it will convert it into object code, and then you can also uh, assemble and run it in the browser. So this has been my way of verifying that my uh, CPU actually works, and I've caught many bugs because of it. Um, so what this sample function does here is it computes the sum of these four long numbers, and these are represented in hexadecimal, but basically all you need to know is that the answer is right here, and it will be stored in the zeroth register, RAX. So I can take this code, assemble it, and download it, and then I can save this in my um, binaries folder here. I will call it a sum. Now I can load that file in the game here, and this is just a binary file, it's nothing special, it literally contains the bytes of the program. And you can see when I start uh, ticking the game, the program starts being loaded into this dual RAM here. So you see it starts with 30F4, and if we go back to the website, you see the object code begins with 30F4, um, and then it will just load the entire program up till I think here, because uh, that's when it stops and then uh, the program will begin executing on my CPU. So let's just step through it a bit. Um, it's going to go to hex91 addresses. So that should be coming up soon. Here's the counter for where we are in the file. And that should reach 91. OK, so now that it has detected that the entire file has been read, it will uh, start the clock executing over here, I believe, next tick. Yes, okay, so now this is the clock starting. And the first instruction is already being loaded into the sort of buffer, which uh, is 30F4 and then 0002. And one more tick, and it will execute that instruction, or begin executing, rather. So I will tick. And as you can see, the clock is on, and the bytes 30, F4, 00, and 02, and then just a bunch of more zeros have been loaded into here. And everything is computed correctly. Um, the write back into the register file is done, I believe. Uh, what? Let's see what this instruction is. This is an immediate to register move. So it moves the stack. Um, address into RSP. So we can actually see that taken place. The game has a uh, component called program that you can use to link different components. And as you can see, here's register number four, which is our SP, that's the stack pointer, and the hex value 0200 has been correctly moved into that. Um, so at this point, we would have to hit the tick button a bunch of times if we wanted to go further, but this game can actually compile your components and run them much faster. So it has the ability to run the um, program very fast. So we have this 10 kilohertz button, which is also configurable, and it will do its best to hit that speed. Um, but we're just going to use this one, which runs it kind of fast. Um, and that will be so we can watch the registers update. number is being summed here in register 0. It should be done soon. And now the program has halted because um, the last line in the program that gets run after you return from main is halt. So that's all good. And as you can see, the result has been entered into register number 0. And that answer is ABCD, ABCD, ABCD. So this CPU that I designed in this game, Turing Complete, according to the spec of YD664 that I read in my book, successfully computed the same result as a simulator um, that I found online, uh, which I think is really cool, and which is why I have spent many hours on this this week.
So I have this other file, um, exponentiate, uh, which I found online as well. And what it does is it computes a raised to b. And a is currently set to 3 inside the file, and uh, b is 4. So that's 3 raised to the 4, or 81. And we can see that uh, result stored in RAX. So I'm just going to run the program as fast as possible. And after 1.4 thousand uh, ticks, the program stored hex 51 in RAX, which as a signed integer is 81. So that would be the correct result. Um, I've tested lots of programs on here, um, found bugs, fixed them, tracked, <laughs> tracked down several bugs in my components. But I'm pretty confident to say that my CPU is now almost entirely in spec, like I mentioned. Just missing one of the stat stat things over there. Yeah, so like I said, CPU is fully functional as far as I know, and I'm super proud of this. This was a really fun learning experience for me. Um, I just, I now feel like I have a solid grasp on what it takes to build a CPU, which I never really had before. And as a computer scientist, I now can really appreciate the people who work to build these CPUs from basically logic gates, physical logic gates that are getting smaller and smaller every day. Um, it's also way more impressive to me. The first person that invented one of these uh, sequential CPU designs definitely must not have been easy, especially to do it uh, with physical components. Because behind each and every one of these green wires is 64 bits, which would be really, really big if I wanted to lay them out next to each other. So it's only because of things in this game that I was able to do this at all um, that make it easier than doing it physically. But this was a super cool experience. I would recommend anyone who has an interest in this to look into it more. I'll provide some links in the description to the textbook that my class is using. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my Y8664 CPU implemented in the game Turing Complete. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.